Okay, in this video, we're going to continue with the examples from section 7.2, which is the disc or washer method. Now, example three says, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of y equal to the square root of x and x squared about the x-axis. So let's go ahead and draw that. Again, they do not give us our bounds. Um, so we'll go ahead and set the two functions equivalent to each other so we can find those out. So one function equal to our other function. Um, to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides, which means I'll end up with x equal x to the fourth. Then I'll minus the x over to the right hand side. Factor out an x. And then factor that perfect cube form. Okay, so now from here, if you plug this into the quadratic formula, you're not going to get any real solutions. So I only have two solutions here, x equal to zero and x equal to one. So when I go to draw my graph, I'm going to draw between x equal to zero and x equal to one. Um, now we should get the same value for both. So the square root of zero or zero squared is zero square of 1 or 1 squared is 1. So we do end up with these two points. But to figure out which one is the top and which one is the bottom, um, you could pick another point. You don't necessarily need to because we know that an x squared function is going to go down this way and a square root function actually moves in this manner. Okay. So the top is actually the square root of x and the bottom is x squared, just based off of um, the basic graphs and what they look like. Um, if you want to verify, you could use a number like 0 0.5 and then take the square root of 0 0.5, you get 0 0.7, which is probably closer to 1. And then if you square 0 0.5, you get 0.25, which is going to be closer to zero. So the graph does match the actual y values that we would receive if we plugged in 0 0.5 as well. Okay. So this is the region, and I am revolving about the x-axis. So since my line of revolution is horizontal, that means that my rectangles need to be vertical. Okay. Now I actually drew this... Um, rectangle erroneously. I shouldn't have done it yet, only because I'm not ready um, to discuss where the rectangle should be drawn. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase it for now, and we'll discuss that in just a second. So we do know that this region is not touching the entire line of revolution which means there will be a hole or a gap inside the solid, okay? In this case, because it does touch the line of revolution at some point, it's most likely going to have this really weird bowl shape, okay? So it is a solid, but um, it's kind of hollow in the inside, okay? So we do have to apply the washer, which means we're going to have the volume equal to pi and then my bounds are from zero to one. And I'm going to have the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. So remember, you're taking the bigger solid minus where the hole is at, okay? So remember, this is the line of revolution. So this region is getting spun around and creating that solid. So when you're talking about the radius, you're only talking about um, what's above the um, x-axis and the outer radius would be this outer part as i revolve this this is going to be the outside of the object okay so the outer radius is actually this measurement here okay that measurement the height of it is this function here the square root of x so i may have put a little bit too much space in there but that's okay we can modify it okay now the inner function is going to be this part that's creating the hole and remember, it 
doesn't matter where you draw the rectangle. It's just the idea of where you're supposed to go. So this height here is what I'm going to remove. Or if you want to continue it off of this rectangle, this height here is what you're going to remove from that um, volume. And the function there is actually x squared. So this is what you end up with for your setup. Okay. Now algebraically, I can manipulate that. So I would get x minus x to the fourth. And then I can integrate that. And evaluate it from 0 to 1. So I end up with 1 over 2 minus 1 over 5 minus 0. And I end up with 3 over 10. Which means we end up with 3 pi over 10 as our volume for this particular problem, okay? Now for example four, this one already has a graph drawn for us, okay? Now we could have drawn it ourselves if they had given us the information, but instead of giving us the information in words, they gave us an image, okay? So it says, find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region shown about the y-axis. So this is the y-axis and this is what we're revolving around, okay? So in this particular case, my line of revolution is vertical, which means that my rectangles actually need to be horizontal. Now, if you notice, this entire region, it is shaded, it's very lightly though. But this entire region does touch the line of revolution everywhere, okay, within that interval. So we are going to be using the disk method. And if the line of revolution is vertical, the rectangles need to be horizontal. And so this here, if it revolves around that way, this is going to end up being half of that solid object, right? It's going to look kind of like a saucer, but flat at the bottom. So um let's go ahead and that means that we're going to actually be um integrating with respect to y dy so we get volume equals pi and since we're integrating with respect to y this rectangle is going to span this way so we have to do the lower bound and the upper bound as y values and then we're going to have our radius well this height here depends on this function here and they've given us the function there negative y squared plus 5y so that function is my radius squared dy and now it's just a matter of doing the mechanics of this so we get pi i'm going to actually foil this out so y squared times is positive y to the fourth then negative 10y and then plus 25 oh I'm sorry 10y squared nope y cubed that times that is negative 5y cubed and then another negative 5y cubed is negative 10y cubed and then this times itself is 25y squared so now we can integrate And we're going to evaluate it from 1 to 5. So for 5, let's see, 5 raised to the 5th divided by 5 is 625 minus 5 to the 4th times 10 
divided by four is 1562.5 plus five to the third times 25 divided by three. That's not a nice decimal, so I do have to use the fraction version. Oh, let's see, 25 times 125 is 3125 over three. We'll just leave that one alone. Minus, I'm running out of room here, so I'm gonna put it over here on the side. So if I plug in one, I'm gonna get one fifth minus 10 over four, which is five over two, plus 25 over three. So I'm gonna put all of this in the calculator and see what it gives me. Um, So let's see, let's do 625 minus 1562.5 plus 3125 over 3, then this would be minus 1 fifth, that would be plus 5 halves, and that would be minus 25 over 3. It gives me this number, but let's see if it will convert that into a fraction. Yes. So I get 1472 over 15 times pi. And this is the volume of that figure that would be created if I revolved this around the y-axis.